perfect, thank you. Guess where I am right now? No, I'm not in some cutting-edge, hipster, reconstructed, ex-industrial building coffee shop in East London. No, I'm in an eco-techno company at the very cutting edge of what they're doing in Grimsby in North Lincolnshire. And I've come here to see an alternative or possibly a competitor to the Tesla Powerwall. I've come here to see the Libby. Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. So my energy was started six years ago and now has a range of eco-smart products that allow you to maximize the use of renewable energy to power your stuff. So there's the original product, Zappi, which we featured on the Fully Charged Show many times, and that allows you to choose where the energy comes from to put in your car. You can just put solar power in your car. Then there's the, uh, the Eddy that controls where the uh, renewable energy goes in your house. And then there's the Harvey, which lets all these different things communicate. And finally, and this is what's really exciting, there is the Libby. Now the Libby lets you store renewable energy in your house for use later. What happens when the sun doesn't shine? You turn on your Libby. So Mineage is adding a battery, this is our Libby product, to our home ecosystem offer to our customers because in terms of energy independence and making sure people can get better energy independence in their own home, being able to store energy is incredibly important. So that could be someone, for example, benefiting from charging a battery off off-peak electricity, storing cheap electricity to use it when prices are higher during the day, or more likely it's someone who is storing renewable generation, typically solar, uh, during, during the day when it's sun shiny and so on, and then to use, for example, in the evenings, charge it up the next day. So the Libby battery will basically become part of a MyEnergy ecosystem for a customer. So if they have their MyEnergy app, for example, they'll be able to prioritise between the different loads. Um, really importantly for us, this means that it will integrate seamlessly with things like EV charging. Some customers in the past have had issues where, say, a third party battery that doesn't talk to other systems very well will, for example, start draining as soon as you plug your EV in. Now, you might want that energy to stay in the battery and charge off the grid. So what we can do is allow that. We have functionality to allow that in our ecosystem. So you would prioritise one over the other by simply sort of swiping around in the apps our customers do. Um, but yeah, we're really excited about Libby. Um, it's great to be able to kind of complete the ecosystem for our customers. People have been asking for a battery product from Energy for a long time, um, and we, you know, we'll obviously be supplying it as quickly as we can. With sort of volumes expected to ramp up throughout the sort of start of 2023. So the bit on the top is the inverter, right? Okay. Uh, the bit on the bottom is the battery, and you, these are modular, so you can expand the system with more batteries. Oh, so you, oh, I see. You could have more of those. Exactly. But you don't. Need, you only need one of those. That's exactly so. Yes. Right. One, one inverter, and, and it's hybrid, so it will um, that will look after the the battery connecting it to your AC system because uh, the batteries are DC, okay? But also if you've got PV panels or installing PV panels, they can be connected into this as well rather than having a separate uh, inverter for your PV panels. What is the, the storage capacity of that, that unit then? Uh, so that battery, the capacity is very slightly over five uh, kilowatt hours, 5.12 right. kilowatt hours, I believe. And you can have up to four in total. So we're talking maximum capacity about 20 oh, kilowatt hours. 20 kilowatt hours, which yeah. is, that's very chunky, yeah. So. That's a lot. And, that, and I mean, it's, it's, if people have never thought about this stuff before, five kilowatt hours is probably enough. It's enough to get you over the evening peak running everything in your house, isn't it? I mean, it's quite a, it's quite it, a lot it, of power. It's a reasonable amount, yes. Yeah. And, and you're looking, if you've got PV panels, you're looking at how much you're spilling to the grid, really. Yeah. If you think, at the moment, that's how we should think, because we're sizing batteries. So uh, if you've got monitoring on your PV panels or a nice my energy system giving you all that data, then you'll be able to see how much you are effectively spilling to the grid and not using yourself. And then you can size the battery to that. And then what about charging it? Because that's something I do in the winter is I'm, I charge off peak in the night. So can you charge that battery from the grid? Absolutely. Right. Yes. So if you have got a, a, a low rate tariff, an overnight tariff or a flexible tariff, you can um, either set a schedule in the Libby controller or use our scheduling engine to, to make sure that it charges 
when the energy is the cheapest. And that's something we're trying to, we're offering as a, a sort of optimization uh, solution, if you like, for people to buy a Libby to make sure that you get the, the most effective use of your generation, but also avoid paying more for your energy than you need to by optimizing the charge in the living. We want to make energy easy for people. Energy is quite a complex subject for many people to understand. I think the current energy crisis has made people suddenly care about their energy more, suddenly look at it more, engage with it more, um, which is great from the perspective of things like solar sales increasing, for example, so that's brilliant to see. Um, but we're very much about making it easy, clear to understand and engage with. Um, and when it comes to things like self-consumption, as we call it, so maximising the amount of the generation you're actually using, that's key. So if you have solar panels in the UK, fantastic but you'll probably only be using maybe 40, 45% of the energy they are generating. And all the rest goes, we, we call it going to waste potentially, but it's, it's, it's being exported going for very little grid, value. Yeah. So going into the grid, you're not benefiting from it, despite the fact that you're generating it and you're, not, you're being paid pittance. So you know, we, we really want to help people maximize that amount of energy they're generating. And to do that, obviously having an electric vehicle is great because that allows you to soak up loads of energy, but also having a battery, a domestic battery is, 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 a, is another win. So we are seeing those self-consumption figures, as they're called, rising in our modeling to you know, closer to 100%. Now, 100% is a bit of a holy grail. You might never get there, but certainly we're seeing you know, well over 90%, maybe 98% self-consumption of potential um, for having this ecosystem stitched together. Um, in terms of making it easy and the, the sort of the friction you come up against when you're trying to build an ecosystem at home, because there aren't sort of global standards yet, agreed standards for how these technologies should talk to each other, um, you do sometimes get that friction where you're trying to build a system, you buy a battery, you buy an EV charge point, you buy a solar, and you try and stitch it all together yourself. And unless you're an electrical engineer, you probably can't do it very well. Um, so what we're trying to do is, is just bring all of those technologies together, make it really simple to engage with, make it really easy for customers to effectively create their own sort of net zero home and adopt sort of uh, energy that will help the energy transition. So that's, that's what we're all about and trying to do. And then obviously when it comes to the future, we see a really strong uh, demand for things like what we call demand side response. So that's where we aggregate or can aggregate um, all of the potential demand from customers um, and offer that up to the grid at some point in the future. So we're really excited about the idea of connecting all these products together to provide uh, grid services or flexibility or demand response, virtual power plant, there's all these buzzwords. Uh, but what it basically means is as we're trying to move to renewable generation, which is you know, potentially less um, controllable, a little bit more intermittent, but still plenty of it. How do we help the grid go through some of those ups and downs in generation? Or if everybody plugs their car in at the same time, how do we stop the grid being overloaded? And because these devices are all controllable and they're all interconnected and connected to the internet, we can send them a signal that says, well, don't charge your car quite so fast at the moment, or discharge your battery a bit to help support the grid. And that will help uh, the penetration of renewables, it will mean we don't have to put more cables, more tra tra transformers, avoid all that capital cost and help, uh, you know, help keep electricity affordable and green. So, so we did some uh, analysis thinking about just customers with Zappi and Eddy. Right. And if you had uh, a million customers with controllable loads like this, that's uh, seven gigawatts of controllable load. Wow. Now that is much bigger than, say, uh, Drax, which is uh, four, biggest, four gigawatts, huge biggest, biggest power station. Power station. Yeah. Yeah. We could do that just rather than turning on that power station right. or you know, another coal-fired or gas fire station. You just dial down the load or take a little bit of power out of the, the Libby, then you can avoid all that invest in that big power station running. It's, that's why FlexBeat is so exciting for us as a, as a project. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to recruit several thousand customers to get that first cohort running and deliver some of these services. But this isn't just about like gadgets and really cool things in your house. Even though all those linked together are really gonna make a big difference to the whole community. It's not just about that. I've come to the town of Grimsby in uh, North Lincolnshire in, in the UK. Now, for those people living outside the UK who've never heard of Grimsby, it's, there was a long period of its history where it kind of lived down to its name, Grimsby. 
but it's really changed. So back in the day, when I was a kid, this was the biggest fishing port in the world, not just in the UK or Europe, in the world. It was massive. It employed tens of thousands of people. It sent fish probably all over the world. It certainly the, it was the main source of, 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 of fish in the UK for many, many years. And that, that gradual decline of that industry meant that this, the town really went down a lot. And it was a, very, a lot of unemployment, a lot of poverty here. In the last 10 years, that has really turned around due to the arrival and the installation of renewable energy manufacturing. So there's lots of wind turbine plants here that are building the blades, that are building the nacelles, that are building the ships that service them. Out at sea, there are no fewer than eight wind farms just off the coast here. The biggest being Hornsey 2, which is the biggest wind farm in the world. And that is what's going on here now. It's completely transformed the town. It's very high employment and my energy are very much part of that. They are now employing hundreds of people in this local area in well-paid, highly skilled jobs that are really making a difference to the world. So is it, is it possible to do like a practical example of this? Because at the moment I can see, you know, from the app that is your system here, the, the car's not, it's clearly not plugged in. There's, there's some energy coming from the solar panels some of it's going in the battery, some of it's going in the house. <laughs> Even though there's not actually a house here, but you know, that's what's happening. So what happens if you plug the car in now? Okay, well, so we, we've got this set up in our engineering lab, so we're simulating what you'd have in your home. And at the moment, what you have is some uh, PV generation. Uh, there's some house load, but there's still some spare PV generation, so that's going into the, the battery right. at the moment. Okay, so we can see that. Um, now, if we roll forward to in the evening, so the, the, yeah, it's dark, the sun's no longer shining, um, and we can turn off the uh, the PV generation. Okay, so okay. we've turned off the PV now, right. and, and what we'll see is the app now shows how the battery is supporting the house. Yeah. And we've still got no power coming from the grid. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's what it's showing now. Now, you've come home from work, um, you've got the, uh, the, the car, you want to plug it in because you want to go out later, you want to charge the car quickly, right? but you want to hold on to that power in your battery to support the house later when it's going to be expensive, you know, sometime tomorrow yeah. maybe. So if I plug the car in, right. I just have to opt to um, the, the smart charging delay and and then what I'll do is I'll put a, a boost on this to, as I was, I was charging the car as soon as, as I came. As fast as you can, sort of okay. yeah. So Zappy's now starting. You right. can hear it doing its checks. It's gone green. And as the, the car starts to ramp up the power, what we'll see in the app is that the Libby, the battery, the output doesn't change. Right. That's still matched to the house. Yes, okay. But we're taking grid power to feed the car. Right. So we're actually choosing very, you know, making a conscious decision how we're going to use that energy and where it's going to, to go to. Right. So, so that's one of the first use cases. And you can't do that with third party batteries. You oh. can't make those decisions. You can with this system. Yeah. That is so good. And then is it possible to adjust that then on the, with the app? Can you then say, oh, well, I will take the power from the battery. I mean, or do you, uh, uh, ab absolutely. Right. So you, you can you can do whatever you like. So you right. can make it so that you can charge the car as fast as you want and take everything out of the battery as quickly as you can right. uh, and still take some from the grid if you need right. to. Uh, I'll just stop this a second because we can uh, to show the other option, which is a lot of our customers say, well, I've, I've caught all that sunshine during the day in my battery at yeah. home. And now I'd like to put it into my car because I want to drive on green miles. And again, that's very difficult to match the output from the battery to support the house and the car and, and not import from the right. grid. Um, and what you should see now is that it's, it's doing exactly that. So the, the, you should see nothing coming from the grid at the moment. Right. But it's just supporting the battery is now putting into the car and into the house. Right. It's really I mean, it's exciting to be able to play these games. Yeah, yeah. I've got it exactly right. And then you can, each customer will be different and they'll want to do different things with their stored energy. And, and with the connected system, you can make that decision, all of your devices, exactly where your energy comes from, green or grid, and where it goes to. In terms of what's next for the company, we've obviously got our new 65,000 square foot factory we're building next door yeah. that you've seen, a phenomenal growth of the business. 
Um, but really, I think it's more about how can we help customers, not just through products, but also services to um, you know, increase that amount of energy they, they're using in an efficient way um, and basically benefit from the future of the energy transition, benefit from what's happening to the grid as well. So as the grid gets more flexible, as you get more renewables, how can customers integrate with that and benefit from it um, in their own homes? So it's all about for us, not just thinking of ourselves as a, as a, as a company that supplies products, but also one that provides services to our customers as well and ones that they can really benefit from. So I think what my energy are doing is incredible, really. It, it, they, they're not only making products that help individuals and, and households use the renewable energy they may be producing and manage their energy more efficiently and, and really make that without all the faff of, of that really simple app that really works. That is brilliant. But beyond that, it's the way all this equipment can be integrated across the whole country and actually work in a way to save peaks in demand on the grid, which means that we save an enormous amount of money burning imported fossil fuels to produce energy. We, we won't need to do that in future. And that is a brilliant step in the right direction. So, you know, this is this green stuff that they're working on, I think is it's kind of important. I kind of like green stuff and that is what the Fully Charged Show is all about. Anyway, that's all we've got time for. Please do subscribe. Please have a look at the Patreon link. All links to MyEnergy's new products are in the, the, the show notes of this episode. And as always, if you have been, thanks for watching.